Hey, Precalc, I'm going to talk a little bit about finding zeros. Uh, this is our first, first uh, piece of topic four. And uh, let me get a polynomial up here. And uh, I want to find all the zeros. And finding all the zeros of this thing um, entails finding any x value such that if I plug it into here, it makes a zero. One way I could think about that to find some of the zeros, not necessarily all of them, is just to, to graph this and see what happens. And it looks to me like uh, if I plug in negative 2, it would spit out a 0. If I plug in 1, it would spit out a 0. If I plug in 3, it would spit out a 0. Okay, so 3, 1, and negative 2. But let's see, from Desmos, we said 3 negative 2 and 1. All right, so now what I want to do is uh, to start to give you some tools to find these algebraically for a couple reasons. One of the reasons is um, in some cases the graph isn't sufficient to show us all the zeros or it, it I'd say and it's also uh, not sufficient to give us the exact value of all the zeros. Uh, we're looking for exact values. So here is what I want to do. If 3 is a 0 of this thing, that means x minus 3 must be a factor, <clears throat> right? That's when, when we solve quadratics and we factor them into like x plus 1, x minus 5 equals 0, or I'll say x plus 5. We say the zeros are, no, I'll say minus 5. We say the zeros are negative 1 and 5, right? Because if I, if I plug a negative 1 into here, uh, I, I multiply 0 by something, plug a 5 into here, a 0 by something, they give me 0. So when we're finding all the zeros of this, we're saying, when does this equal zero? So if I could take this x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x, if I knew how to, how to just factor cubics, I'd be in good shape like I can factor quadratics. But what I'm going to have to do is some division. So I'm actually going to divide this by x minus 3. Now there is a long division way to do this. Um, and I'll actually talk to you in class about that. But you could set it up like this, and you do some long division. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna step through that today. We'll we'll save that. I'm gonna show you a tool that's called synthetic division, and this is the tool that I want you to use. So first thing we did, we used Desmos to find some zeros. I'm just gonna start with one of those one of those zeros. So I'm just gonna grab three, and then what I want to do is practice algebraically finding the other zeros. So if the zero is three, notice that's the thing that makes this a zero. X minus three, three is the zero. So fourth synthetic division, here's just the procedure. And I'm just going to give you the procedure now for the video, but in class I'll walk you through why it works. So I grab the actual zero that I want to try, three. And then I do this, uh, just make my little house. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the coefficients out of here. So notice I have 1x cubed. I have negative 2x squared. I have negative 5x's. And I have 6 1's. So notice I kind of had these, this is an x cubed column, this is an x squared column, x column, and a 1 column. I don't really need to write those above, but that's, that's where those are coming from. And then synthetic division has this, this process that we use. Again, that's the 0. These are coefficients. And I'm actually doing this division by doing this process. So here's how it works. You just bring down the first value, 1. <laughs> pretty easy so far and then here are the steps uh, for the rest of the time you're gonna multiply whatever's here by by that three by whatever that zero is so one times three gives me three and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add so negative two plus three is one hmm, we got it at one again all right, and then we just keep doing that process. We take whatever's here, multiply it by that, put it here and add. Multiply by that zero and add. So I'm gonna keep doing that. And these little, I don't know what color these are, uh, arrows that I'm drawing, you don't need to draw those. So three times one is three. And then again, I'm just gonna keep doing this, add. Uh, negative five plus three is negative two. And then I take that, multiply it by three again. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. 
So that spot right there is my remainder spot. If my remainder is zero, that works. That actually means that three is a zero for this. That means if I plug a three in for X along here, this will spit out a zero. I've found one of the zeros. What I've done so far is I've divided out an X minus three from this one X cubed, negative two X squared, negative five X. And it's left me something, uh, just three values. Notice this was X cubed and I divided it by an X. So these terms down here are all shifted down one level. Like if this is X cubed, this is how many X squareds you have. This is how many X's you have. This is how many ones you have. So I have this X minus three times what's left is a quadratic one X squared plus one X minus two. So this act of synthetic division is a way to divide this out of that. And if I have a remainder of zero, I'm good. If, if this was anything but a zero, that would mean this isn't a, a zero and I would, I would go back and try another number. But I know it is a zero from Desmos. So I've got the three out this way. So now I need the negative two and the one. So I know that one of my zeros is three. And what I can do now is this quadratic that's left, I can just try and factor it if it's factorable. So I want things that multiply to negative two and add to one, which would be uh, two and negative one. So X minus three, uh, X plus two, X minus one. So I have this X plus two times X minus one. So notice one of my zeros is three. One of my zeros is negative two and one of my zeros is one. Boop, 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 all came out of there. And I had to combine a couple skills. I took this X cubed minus two X squared minus five X plus six. I did some division and some factoring and I turned it into that. And then I could tell what my zeros were. My answer are, is three negative two and one. Now I know I got that from Desmos, but uh, we are not going to be completely dependent on Desmos. Uh, plus Desmos doesn't always give us exact values for all the zeros. So two skills here that, I'm, that you're going to be practicing. One is synthetic division, and another is solving these quadratics. Now this factored might not factor. We might have to use some other tools. So I'm going to do another example. All right, there's another cubic. I want to find zeros for it, and I want to find exact values of zeros for it. So I'm going to throw it into Desmos. X cubed minus 11X squared plus 37x minus 35. On the assignment, I want you to use Desmos to at least get one of the zeros. So, okay, yeah, we've got some zeros here. 4.414, ugh. Oh, a five, that's good. 1.586. These don't feel like exact values to me, but five sure does. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus in on that five. So I know I got five as one of the zeros. This was from Desmos. And I got something that's about 4.414, something that's about 1.586. I'm going to use that 5. I know that would have come from an x minus 5 factor. So I'm going to divide this by x minus 5, and I should be left with a quadratic. And then I'll see what I can do with a quadratic to get exact values for these. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this, I'm dividing it by x minus 5. Now again, my tool synthetic division. And what goes out here is the actual zero, so five, not, not minus five. If this had been x plus five, that'd be a negative five, right? Like it's the same. And then again, what I'm doing is I'm lifting out coefficients. So I have one x cubed, I have negative 11 x squareds, I have 37 x's, I have negative 35 ones. All right, synthetic division. So first step, bring it down. I just bring down the first number no matter what it is, so it's a 1. And now my process is going to be multiply by 5, put that answer here, add. Multiply by 5, put that answer here, add. Multiply by 5, and hopefully I end up with a 0 at the end. If I do end up with a 0, it is a uh, 5 is a 0. If I don't, then Desmos lied to me. Times 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Add those together, negative 11 plus, plus 5 is negative 6. 
Again, remember what I do is I multiply and then I add. So now I'm going to multiply. I'm always multiplying by that zero. By five, and then I'm going to add. Then I'm going to multiply by five. Then I'm going to add. That's how synthetic division works. Uh, negative six times negative uh, times just five. Sorry, is negative thirty. I add those together. I get seven. Seven times five is thirty-five. Oh, look at that! Gorgeous. Add those together. I get zero. No remainder. So I took this x cubed, right? This was 1x cubed, negative 11x squared. I divided by an x minus 5. x cubed divided by x is x squared. So what's left is, I had this x minus 5. What's left is a quadratic. I have 1x squared minus 6x plus 7. All right, so now what I could do is I could try and factor this. What are things that multiply to 7, add to the neg negative 6, nothing like negative seven and one but that multiplies to negative seven not positive seven so if i can't factor this i got to use quadratic formula remember the quadratic formula says if you have a quadratic solve for zero a b and c you plug them into here negative b plus or minus squared to b squared minus 4 ac over 2a do some arithmetic and you get the answers so in this case Let's see, a is 1, I have 1x squared, b is negative 6, and c is 7. Um, so let's go ahead and plug those into the quadratic formula. So b is negative 6, so I have negative b, so negative negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 6 squared. Be careful, make sure that negative is in parentheses and you square it. Minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, c is 7 all over 2 times a, a is 1. All right, arithmetic time. Negative and negative 6 is 6. Negative 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times 1 times 7. 14 is 28 all over 2, which is 6 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2. That's pretty good. That's a, that's a good solution. Uh, I'm wondering how that compares to these values. So let me see here. 6 plus square root of 8. Close that off. Divide by 2. Oh, there's my 4.414. Yeah, that's good evidence. And then I could check the minus case. 1.58. Yeah, good. Those are exact. So um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Don't get too bogged down in the specific specifics of this right now. We'll, we'll spend some class time on this. Square root of 8 is the same as square root of 4 times 2. What I'm doing is I'm pulling out a square here. Square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Square root of 4 is 2. So 8 is 2 root 2. So I have 6 plus or minus 2 root 2 over 2. And then if I want to push it a little more, these are both divisible by 2. They're, they're both divided by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1, leaving me the root 2. So my zeros are 5. 3 plus the square root of 2, and 3 minus the square root of 2. Those are exact uh, versions of my zeros. Again, here's what I did. I used Desmos. I got at least one of the zeros out of it. Used some synthetic division to pull out one of the factors, leaving me a quadratic. And then I used quadratic formula to get the other two zeros. Cool. All right, one more example. So here it is. I'm going to find all the, the exact values of all the zeros. Remember, zeros are values that if you plug them into this, they make a zero. That's, that's what I mean. What x values, if I plug them into this equation, would make a zero? So let's uh, at least take a peek at Desmos, see what that does for us. 2x cubed. Quick double check. Yeah, that seems right. Whoa, wow. Okay, check this out happens at six there's that that shape that looks like a cubic so it looks like it happens at six at least let's let's go from here and see what happens so desmos tells me i have a zero at six that means that x minus six would be a factor of this so i'm going to try and do this division so synthetic division remember I set this up x is the zero is six Right, what makes this denominator zero? Pull out those coefficients. So I have 2x squared, 2x cubed, 
uh, negative 20x squared, 58x's, and negative 60. All right, and I'm going to do my synthetic division. So I bring it down. Again, that first number just comes straight down. And then I multiply. And remember, I always multiply by the, by the 0. So 6 times 2 is 12. And then I get into the cycle where I just always do the same thing. Add uh, negative 20 plus 12 is negative 8. And then uh, multiply 6 times negative 8. Negative 48. Then I add. And you do not need to draw the arrows every time. I'm just doing it because I like it just to show the process, right? Uh, 58 minus 48 is 10. Oh, this is working out great. And then I multiply again. Multiply by that 0. 6 times 10 is 60. If I add those together, I have a remainder of 0. So what I did was I took this. I divided it by x minus 6. It was a cubic divided by a, uh, and just an x to the first, right? x cubed divided by x to the first. A cubic divided by a linear. It's going to leave me a quadratic. So I have 2x squareds minus 8x plus 10. All right, and I could try and factor this thing. I'm not going to have any luck factoring it. I'm going to run it through the quadratic formula again. Formula again. So let's plug in those numbers. Looking at this, a is 2, b is negative 8, and c is 10. Remember, a is the coefficient for x squared, b is the coefficient for x, and 10 is the ones. Uh, c is the ones. So negative b, b is negative 8, so I have negative, negative 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared negative 8 squared minus 4 times a, a is 2, times c, c is 10, all over 2 times a. Okay, arithmetic time, negative negative 8 is positive 8, plus or minus negative 8 squared is 64, uh, negative, so that's minus 4 times 2 is 8, times 10 is 80, and that is all over 4. So this gives me 8 plus or minus the square root over 4 of negative 16. Negative 16. The square root of negative 16. Square root of negatives is not real, but we can represent it. Um, the square root of negative 1 is an, is an i. This is an imaginary number. So the square root of 16 is 4. So I have 8 plus or minus 4. Think of this as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 16 i. Square root of negative 1 is i. So square root of negative 16 is 4i, and that's over 4. So that's pretty good. I plus, I divide both those by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So my other zeros are 2 plus i and 2 minus i. So what was my first one? 6. So my zeros here are 6, 2 plus i, 2 minus i. And in class, we will dig a lot into this imaginary unit and what it means. All right. Lots of uh, chances for you to get some practice in. Um, let me know what questions you have. I will be uh, back in class next week.